Hi everyone, Sean here with Reality Forge. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to use the new movie render queue to render out layers and passes of your cinematics in Unreal Engine 5.4. This video is a re-recording of the tutorial we put out earlier and thanks to all the great feedback from all of you, we decided we had to redo it. For this short tutorial, I'm using Jesse Storm's modular sci-fi environment and the cargo ship from Kitbash 3D. I first rigged the ship in Blender and then set up a control rig for it in Unreal Engine along with some materials for the engine thrust. First, you want to make sure you have Movie Render Queue enabled. If it isn't, go to Settings, Plugins, search a Movie Render Queue and enable it over here. Unreal is going to ask for a restart. Next, go to Settings, your project settings, and up here, search for Alpha. And this drop-down menu needs to be set to Linear Color Space only. And then restart Unreal. Open your Sequence and Sequencer and click on this clapper over here. And then you want to click on this downward pointing arrow and then replace with graph experimental. Clicking on this will open the default render graph. The render graph like blueprints has nodes connected by wires and goes from left to right. So on the left here we have our inputs, our warm-up settings, our game overrides, our output settings and finally our outputs which are defined on the upper left over here. Inputs are also connected to the type of renderer, so deferred renderer, then the output format, so JPEG. This is then connected to a render layer and then this is outputting to the default layer. Now, before we get started, do not make any changes to your default render graph. Instead, we're going to create our own graph. You can make your own graph in one of two ways, either open the content browser, right click, choose cinematics and movie render graph config, or go back to sequencer, click on the clapper, click on this downward pointing arrow and then new graph. In my case, I'm gonna name this graph MRCG underscore lander. When you click save, Unreal assigns this graph to the movie render queue and now we can click on its name to open the graph. To make understanding this easy, we're going to do something really simple. We're going to render out two layers, one for the ship and one for the environment. Let's begin by deleting the JPEG and the render layer node and we're going to plug our deferred renderer into a PNG node. You can also use EXR if you want here. The PNG node is then going to be plugged into a collection node. The collection node is what we're going to use to isolate specific objects in our scene. So it's very important. We're going to give it a name, col underscore env. After adding a condition group, there is a number of ways that you can set up this filter. You could filter for actor, tags, components, folders, and even sub-levels. We're going to be using actor. After choosing actor, you can click on this button to open a list of all the actors in your scene, just like an outliner. Now I want everything in this environment but the ship. So I'm going to select the ship and the skeletal mesh that's its child, go to select and then invert selection. Now, rather than adding every actor one by one, I can click on that button again and then add selected and outliner. Now that we have everything but the ship in this collection, we can now modify it. Once again, drag out a pin from collection and search for modifier. Give your modifier a name. In my case, it's going to be mod underscore env for environment and then hold out. This is also very important. You need to specify what collection your modifier is modifying. Now I'm going to set hold out to true. Plug this into a render layer and give it a name. So in my case, I'm going to call this ship only because the environment is being held out. To conclude, I'm going to also change the name of this default layer output. So I'm going to click on output on the left here and change its name to ship only. And then finally, let's plug the output from our render layer to this. With all that complete, you can go back to sequencer now and click on the clapper, make sure MRGC lander is selected and then render now local. If everything is correctly configured, you should now see transparency in your render preview. Like you can see here, only the ship is being rendered. In some cases, you may notice that your background isn't rendering correctly. And this is because of the absence of a sky sphere. So I just went and created a new basic level, copied the sky sphere from them and I pasted it into my environment. Now that you know how to render a single layer, I'm going to show you how to render a second layer alongside this so you can use this knowledge to render as many layers as you need. Once again, we're starting with a collection. I'm going to name this collection collection underscore ship only. But this time around to change things up, I'm going to filter by actor tag name. This means that any actors with the tag ship are going to be automatically added to this collection. Like we did previously, we're going to plug this into a modifier. I'm going to give this a name. So mod underscore hide ship. Again, very important you specify what collection you're modifying and then we're going to set is hidden to true. This is then going to be plugged in as we have above to a render layer and I'm going to name this render layer background only. Now we're going to add an output for this render layer. So we're just going to add an output like this and name it background only just like we have done with our render layer. And then we're going to plug the output from our render layer to this. To add a tag to your actor, first select the actor and then in the details panel over here, search for tag. Click on this button to add a tag and I'm just going to type in ship. I'm also going to make sure to add the same tag to the child skeleton, which is the afterburners for my ship. If you want to change your anti-aliasing method or specify the amount of spatial samples, you can do this by selecting the deferred renderer. If you want to change your temporal sample, you'll have to add a sampling method node up here and then 
you can go ahead and override and change it and then connect it to your warm-up settings. Before we conclude, worth noting that subgraph lets you pass through any other graph inside your primary graph. And with that, you now know how to render layers using the movie render graph. As mentioned before, we got a few questions and comments on our first version of this video about passes and how to render these out, not just layers. If we were not using the movie render graph, we could click on deferred render and add a post process material like this. The same can be done in the movie render graph by clicking on the deferred render node and then adding a post process material like this. Beware, it's going to show you all the materials in your project, so you have to know what you're looking for. Now we've already got a world depth post process applied and along with this, we have a motion vector one as well. I'm going to add a reflection post process material by searching for movie render and you'll see a whole bunch of them over here. Opening the folder this asset is located in shows you all the movie render queue post process materials. For the buffer visualization we saw earlier, go to engine, content, buffer visualization and you'll find those post process materials over here. So for example, if I wanted to export the metallic buffer, I'll select it, then select the deferred render, add a post process material, assign it, and then enable it. Now, if you're using Lumen, which is the default dynamic global illumination method in Unreal Engine 5, the ambient occlusion buffer will be completely white. This is expected. You should be using the material ambient occlusion buffer instead. Now, you may notice your world depth pass is completely black. That's because you should be using scene depth instead. Now, if you have a very large scene, you may notice banding like I'm noticing over here. To fix this, we're going to open the scene depth post process material, and you're looking for this number over here. At first, I added another zero, reducing the value, and this removed some of the banding, but I ended up going with 0.5 zeros and three, and this gave me a much better depth gradient. To conclude, don't forget to change your world depth post process material to the scene depth post process material that we've been working on. Now let's write all of this to a combined JPEG sequence. So I'm gonna add a JPEG sequence node, connect this to a render layer node, no modifications or collections needed here. We're going to name this node combined passes. I'm also going to add a output, with the same name. So we'll click on output here. We're just going to add an output and name this combined passes as well, and then connect the output from our render layer to it. When you render this render graph upon completion, you're going to get an error. It's going to say missing expected renderer underscore sub underscore name. To fix this, click on your output format node, go to the end of the file name format string, add a dot and an opening brace. And here we can select renderer sub name. And with that, you now know how to use the movie render graph to render layers and passes of your cinematics in Unreal Engine. Let us know in the comments what you thought about this video. We read and try to respond to each one of them and try to implement the great feedback from all of you where possible, which is why we redid the initial version of this video to make it more accurate to what we were trying to demonstrate. As always, give us a like, give us a sub, and I will see you in the next one.